Welcome back. In the previous segment, we discussed how to create structure types and also create variables or structures or instances of an already created structure type. In this segment, we are going to see what kinds of operations we can perform on structures. So, the first uh, operation or the first, uh, first thing we can do with structures is to initialize them during creation itself. So, let me just remind you this is our um, st structure type book, it contains members, title and price and uh, I can create an instance or I can create a structure of this type and uh, I can initialize it. So, the initialization as usual happens through braces and the first element uh, in the braces initializes the first member which is title. And so, b dot title would be set to the string on education. Then the second member in the braces initializes the second, the, the, the second element in the braces I should perhaps say initializes the second member of the structure type book which is price. So, this initializes b dot price to 399. Okay. So, Again let me remind you that on education is a character string and it is stored with a terminating null as usual. And you might have uh, lots of members in a particular uh, structure type, so you have to give as many, um, as many values in braces and having the appropriate type. You can make structures unmodifiable by adding the keyword const. So, for example, you may uh, define a structure variable c with title member being the outsider and the price being 250, but here you are saying that c cannot be modified. Either of the two members of c cannot be changed as your program executes. Now, one structure can contain another. So, for example, we might have a structure point which contains say the coordinates of the point and now if I want to define a structure disk, it would be natural to have the center being defined as a point. So, the first member here is a point which is a type. So, all that we really need is a proper type and so point center is perfectly fine. And then the second member is of type double and we are going to call it radius. So, we can create a structure D or an instance of type disk by writing disk D. So, I can write D dot radius because after all radius is a member of D and I can set D dot radius to be 10. But D has a member center which in turn has a member X. So, I can write d dot center dot x equals 15 okay? and of course, I can write d dot center dot y as well to whatever y coordinate I think the center ought to have. I can assign one structure to another. Okay? So, basically all members of the right hand side get copied into the corresponding members of the left hand side. So, the name of the structure stands for the entire collection unlike array names. So, array names stand for the address where the array has been allocated memory. Structures are not like that. The structure name stands for the entire collection. And as I said earlier, a structure is a variable or you might actually think of it as a super variable because it contains, you can also think of the members being the variables which are contained in this bigger variable. So, as an example, we have a book B with title on education and price 399 and say we have a book C. So, now I can write C equal to B. This will copy both the members and so if I print C dot price, the price member of C which is which has been copied over from B is 399 and so 399 will get printed. Structures can be used with functions and uh, they can be passed to functions by a value. Okay. So, 
when you pass it by value it is sort of like assignment all the members are copied to the to the parameter uh, parameter structure okay and of course the usual thing is that uh, the, the the types must match so even in an assignment and even in passing the types must match okay structures can also be passed by reference and uh, this means exactly the same thing as in case of variables so in the calling in the call program the parameter name refers to the same variable which was passed from the calling program the calling function okay and you can return structures as well so what does this mean so all the data members of the structure that you want to return are copied back to a temporary structure in the call in the calling program and then you can do whatever you want with that temporary temporary structure basically this temporary structure is going to be in place of uh, the call so so the the, the call um, uh, should be thought of as returning the result and that's where that temporary structure is going to be so we'll see examples so first an example of passing by value so here is a structure point the one that we saw earlier it has members uh, x and y both double now here is a function called midpoint so it takes as arguments a and b which are both points okay and um, it does it creates a new point mp and returns that so we'll see exactly what happens and then there is the main program and uh, main the main program is going to call this function midpoint okay so the first call the red call okay suppose we ex start executing main and come to the red call so what happens so the arguments p and q are copied to the parameters a and b okay so so this is this is the call and these arguments p q are copied to these parameters a and b and now the uh, code of midpoint starts executing okay. so the first step is that a local structure mp of type point is created and this is created in the activation frame of this function midpoint its x and y variables are set suitably okay so it they are set to the mean of the x and y variables of x and y coordinates of points a and b and then this mp is returned so this happens as follows so a temporary structure of type point is created and that structure sort of stands in for this call okay and the elements of or the, the members of mp are copied into that temporary structure so or otherwise or you can think of that entire struct this entire structure is copied into that entire structure okay and subsequently what will happen main program will start resume, will start uh, executing again and this will be assigned to r okay so mp is copied into the temporary structure and the temporary structure is copied into structure r and then in this we can print r dot x that's perfectly acceptable and uh, here is another call okay so here we are calling midpoint but we are directly taking its x coordinate we are not putting it into any local variable and taking taking the coordinate taking the member we can do this we can just we can just put dot x and this will, this will just mean whatever this call returns take its x member okay we can pass by reference as well and in this case the code is really the same except that we have these two ands which indicate that these that a and b are passed by reference okay so in the execution of midpoint pq the parameters ab 
will refer to variables p and q, okay? nothing will be copied over. Now there is no copying of pq and this will save execution time if the structures being passed are large. And indeed if you are passing large structures, it is a good idea to pass them by reference. The rest of the execution is as before. And uh, normally if I have a reference parameter, I, I have that because I want to modify it and therefore it is expected that the reference parameters should be variables. Okay, so these, so whatever is being called over here should be variables because only then can I modify them, modify these uh, reference parameters in the code. However, this const says that this code promises not to modify these things, these parameters. And therefore, with this const you can pass constant points uh, as arguments to midpoint as well. Okay? So constant structures can be passed as arguments. So in fact, I can write midpoint of the midpoint of P and Q and Q. Okay? So this will sort of get me a point which is a quarter of the distance away towards Q between P and Q. Okay, so I can do that as well, I can nest these calls also. Next I can have arrays of structures if I wish. So for example, I can write disk D and uh, this just defines um, variables D0 through D9, each of which is a disk. Okay. Similarly, I can have a variable lib, maybe short for library, which is an array of 100 books. So again this defines variables lib0 through lib99 each of which is a structure of type book. Okay. So now these, these variables are just like ordinary disk variables and so I can take their center x and all the usual stuff. Okay. And this also is sort of a usual variable. So I can t take its member, but the member happens to be an array. So I can write, I can index into it. And so this is going to print the third character of the fifth book in the array library. Or I guess I, I should have called it lib because this is how we created it. So it's not really, I'll read this as lib in both places. All right, so what have we discussed? We have discussed a number of operations on structures, initialization, nesting and by that I mean having a member be another structure and we have discussed passing and returning structures from functions. We have also discussed creating arrays of functions. In the next segment, we will have a detailed example involving structures, but let us take a quick break.